The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Fathers and mothers of America, attention please. Upon the training you give your children today depends the future of America. Our system of free enterprise, personal liberty, and democracy cannot exist without educated and enlightened citizens. In about 14 minutes, our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, will have some helpful suggestions for parents. If you wish to equip your children so that they will be able to take advantage of all the opportunities the future offers, don't miss this important message. Tonight's FBI file, The Return of the Mob. Last year, America celebrated victories over two powerful external foes. Victory is made possible only by the perfect coordination, the perfect teamwork of every unit of every branch of the armed forces and civilian production. Today, America is at war against a mighty internal foe, a powerful army of criminals sweeping the nation with the biggest crime wave in her entire history. And victory in this war will depend likewise on perfect teamwork. The perfect teamwork of all branches of law enforcement, local, state, and federal, plus the cooperation of you, the American citizen. Teamwork of the kind that smashed a criminal kingdom in tonight's case from the files of your FBI. <laughs> Twenty years ago, the White Horse Tavern in the city of Riverdale was a popular speakeasy and the throne room of one of the most powerful mobs of that era. Today, this tavern is only a second-rate bar and grill, looking as worn and grimy as the middle-aged man who has just entered the front door and crossed to the bar. What'll you have, mister? Uh, huh? I said, what'll you have? Oh, not a thing, thanks, I... I just come in to look around. Well, the 50-cent tour don't start for an hour, so breeze, will you? Yeah, wait a minute, bud. Wait a minute. Yeah? I used to come in here years ago. A lot of years ago. Uh Uh-huh. I was wondering if any of the old customers were still here. Look, Mac, I just came on this job a month ago. Take your business down the street. Wait, wait. You ever hear of Curly Silvers? Sleepy Young? No. How about George Hamilton? Hamilton? Yeah. He's sitting right back there. No kidding. Hey, Eddie, let's have a couple of beers, will you? Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, that's wonderful, really wonderful. Come on, drink up, baby. We gotta be moving. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me. Yeah? I was told there was a friend of mine back here. Well? George Hamilton, do you know him? I'm George Hamilton. Uh, Oh, you can't be. You're too young. Look, Pop, what is this, a touch? No, no, no. I'm looking for a fellow who used to hang out here 20 years ago. Hey, George, maybe he means your old man. My old man worked for this bum. Stop, will you? 20 years ago, his boss was King Brown. I'm King Brown. What? I said I'm King Brown. They, this used to be my headquarters. George, is he lovely? Here's a picture, miss. Me and George Hamilton... 20 years ago? Let me see that. Sure, here. That's Pop, all right. Yeah, and that's me. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, what do you know? I thought you were sent away for life. I was paroled. Get out two days ago. You know something, honey? What? 
His character used to be the biggest operator in town. King, what brought you back here? I'm on my way to my brother's farm in Minnesota. Did you get the shorts? Need some coffee? Well, I... Yes. Got the hungries going, too? I could stand the meal, yeah. Sit down. Hey, I thought we were leaving. I want to talk to the guy. Yeah, but we got to All right, down sit to... down, I'll both of you. Okay. Thanks. King, my old man used to say you were the best organizer he ever saw. Well, that was a long time ago. That happens to be the business I'm interested in right now. Maybe I can pick up a few tips. How about a nice big steak? Go on, go on. Keep talking, King. I just want to fill up your glass again. Thanks. Thanks, sir. I guess this stuff ain't as fancy as you used to drink in the old days, huh, King? Well, honey, at least the label's on the level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the old days, you know something? What? I used to own this town and everybody in it. All I had to do was snap my fingers and they'd jump through a hoop. Why, they couldn't even lay a water main or pave a street without my say-so. You mean, unless you got your cut. That's what I said, is it? Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess those days are gone forever, huh, King? Yeah, but only because the guys with any enterprise have either gone up or pushing daisies. What do you mean? If I was 20 or 25 years younger, honey, I could get together a mob and organize this town over the weekend. I'm glad to hear you say that, King. Huh? Because I am 20 years younger. I don't get you. I got the enterprise and I got the guts. All I need is the know-how about organizing the mob and the town. That's where you could help, King. Huh? Look, why don't you forget about your brother's farm? What do you want to do, finish out your ticket milking cows or stacking wheat? Oh, no, but I... I see, I see. Maybe those 20 cycles in the can have softened you up too much. Now, uh, wait a minute. Maybe you wouldn't know how to get started anymore. Give me another drink. Sure, here. Wouldn't know how to get started, huh? Would you? Look. First thing I'd do is get a mob together and sell protection to all the stores and shops in town. How? It's a very simple recipe, kid. You just give them the acid treatment. What's that? If the guy says he doesn't want to buy protection, you toss a little acid at him. Oh. And you never have to do it more than once, because by the time the acid has burned through his clothes and his skin, he's yelling to do business. King? Huh? Lift your glass. You too, baby. Huh? This town is going to be incorporated again. Things began to move fast behind the scenes in Riverdale, where it was barely a month later that Agent and Judge Collins of the local office of the FBI received a caller on an urgent mission. The caller was Riverdale's chief of police, Claude Monroe, and his mission... It's not news to either of us, Mr. Collins, that the old gang system of organized crime is coming to life again in this country. That's right. But it gave me a pretty stiff jolt last week to find out that it's happening right under my nose in Riverdale. Really? What'd you uncover? Well, I haven't got positive proof, but I, I'm pretty familiar with all the signs of a gang at work. Yes. You see, I was a rookie cop in Riverdale back in the 20s when the mobs were first getting started in this country. Then you must have had a hand in cleaning up King Brown's old mob here. Yes. That's why I can tell what's happening now. Not with the same mob, of course. They were wiped out when King Brown went up, weren't they? That's right. This is a new gang, but it's getting started along the same old pattern. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's running it or who the hirelings are. But this much we do know. Yes. Nearly every store and shop in Riverdale is paying protection. When did this start? Well, it couldn't have been more than a week or so ago. We've been trying to turn the light on it ever since. But, of course, as you might know... Nobody will talk. Exactly. The same old intimidation, Chris. It's hard to blame the store and shop owners much. I know. Not when their property, their work, and even their own lives are at stake. But blasted Collins, the longer they keep silent, the longer they'll be slaves. I know. Something's got to be done. Done fast. Or things will be as bad as they were back in the 20s. Yes. No telling what price the people of Riverdale will have to pay before we can break it up. What's your plan of action? Well, that's why I'm here. I need the FBI's help. 
job is already too big for my small force. But, Chief, I can't... I know, I know. The FBI can't step into a local situation unless some federal law is being violated. But all I'm asking now is, couldn't you at least give us a hand in finding out who's behind this thing? Mr. Monroe, we'll start to look around right now. Okay, even though anybody, I'll make another strike. That's for suckers, the way you're bowling, George. Oh, watch this. Oh, pretty lucky. Nice going, honey. Huh? Oh, hey, where have you been, baby? I've been waiting to show you the new office. Well, let's see it. Okay, amateurs, the alley's yours. Come on, sugar. Look, George, why did you have to pick a bowling alley? Because it gives us a legal front. I'm playing it smart, sweetheart. Here we are. Now be careful when you step on the rug. You'll sink up to your ankles. George, this is beautiful. Like it? Boy, I love it. And that desk. I never saw such a production. How do I look behind it, sweetheart? (laughs) All you need is a secretary on your knee. Well, what are we waiting on? Uh, Is this the right position, Mr. Hamilton? Well, let's uh, try and see. Hmm. Mr. Hamilton. Proud of me now, baby? I don't know. How much money are we making? (laughs) Coming in by the crate for I'm very proud of you. Hello, George. King, from now on, you might try knocking first. Sorry. Well, how are the payments coming in? Why? Just wondering how we're doing. We're doing all right. Any new members for the Southside Protective Association? The boys are out doing a little selling now. Uh, how about that drugstore down on Front Street? That's out. What do you mean, sir? It's a chain store. The manager can't spend any dough without an okay from the home office. And you're going to leave it like that? Well, what can we do about it? Look, kid. I told you to stop calling me kid. Whatever I call you, you better get out of the business right now if you're going to take alibis instead of dough. Listen, King. Are you going to run this outfit like a bush leaguer, or are you going to run it like I told you? Because if you're not, you better toss in the towel right now and get yourself a job jerking soda. Now, just a minute. I got to go up the street. Give me 20. Okay. Here. Thanks. Oh, and uh, by the way... When I come back, I'm going to write a letter to that drugstore's home office and show you how to get that dough coming in. I thought this was your desk, George. Oh, don't worry, sweetheart. I need his brains now. When I finish picking them clean, I'll buy him that ticket to his brother's farm. Collins speaking. Hello, Collins. This is Chief of Police Monroe. Hello, Chief. Any news? Yeah. Those investigative tips you gave us yesterday have already paid off. Oh? The boss of the mob is George Hamilton, Jr., the son of King Brown's former lieutenant. No wonder the pattern of operation was familiar. Everything's the same, even down to throwing acid. Hmm. And here's where the FBI can come into the case. What do you mean? Well, we found out Hamilton sent a threatening letter to the head office in St. Louis of a chain drugstore here. Uh Uh-oh. But we can't get that letter. Why not? Well, it's a small, one-man organization. Only four stores. And the owner, just like the other store owners here, is afraid to talk or cooperate. But you've got proof that there is such a letter. Definitely. And that's enough for us, Chief. We're moving in. Bill. Yeah, King? Where's George? Back in his office. Thanks. Ellen's in there with him. Uh huh. You forgot to knock again, King. Ellen, I'd like to talk to George alone. Okay. You don't have to go, baby. What's on your mind, King? I'd like to have a sort of conference. About what? Well, I've just been checking up. Since that drugstore kicked in, Front Street is 100% organized. So? 
So I thought it was time we were talking about my cut. George, I told you Keep to Keep out of this, baby. King, just out of curiosity, how much cut do you want? 50%. Oh, no. wow. What's so funny? The difference between what you're asking and what you're going to get. And what's that? I bought it for you this morning. Hmm? Huh? This railroad ticket to your brother's farm in Minnesota. And a hundred bucks besides. I'm through picking your brains, King. Here. I get going. I'll give you a chance to say you're just kidding, son. Does this gun look like I'm kidding? No, George. Shut up. Look, you better put that down while you can get off with 50%. What do you mean? If I have to take that gun away from you, I'll take everything. Stop, will you? I mean it, kid. You ain't got guts enough to use it, so put it away. Ah. Oh. Okay. You ask for it. George. George, stop him. He ain't got nerve enough, have you, kid? Keep away from me. Well, why don't you shoot? No. No. Okay. Let go of it. Let go of it. Ah. George. Kids should carry cap pistols. We will return to the FBI file in just a moment. Now, three questions and answers on education. First question. Of our 32 presidents of the United States, how many attended a college or a university? 10? 15? The right answer is even higher. 25 of our 32 presidents have had college or university training. Yes, education does help equip men and women for leadership. It helps to build up the character, judgment, and integrity which identify the well-rounded American citizen. Think that over, mothers and dads, and decide now to investigate an equitable educational fund, a life insurance plan that has solved the problem of education costs for thousands of parents who are members of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Second question, what is an equitable educational fund? It is a plan offered to far-sighted parents by the Equitable Life Assurance Society, and it includes these important features. One, the equitable plan makes sure that money for education will be ready when your child is ready. Two, if you die, the educational fund becomes fully established. If you are totally and permanently disabled, it continues to build up without any further payment. Three, educational costs are spread out over many years instead of being concentrated in a few. Last question. How much will it cost to send your son or daughter to college? That question is answered in a memorandum recently prepared for Equitable Society representatives. It tells the cost of tuition, board, and lodging in 192 leading American colleges. In addition, it summarizes the long-range opportunities open to educated men and women in 29 industries and professions, such as architecture, dentistry, engineering, chemistry, life insurance, social service. The memorandum is crammed with information that every parent should have. Your nearest Equitable Society representative has a copy and will be glad to show it to any sincerely interested parent. Call him tomorrow. You'll find him in the phone book under Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. -E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Return of the Mob. Long years behind prison bars may wither the body and humble the pride of the gangster type of criminal, but seldom do they erase the inborn instinct for crime the contempt for law and for the rights and property and lives of others. Freed from prison, as was King Brown after 20 years, they need only an opportunity and a taste of their former life to send their criminal blood pounding through their veins again, even though they know the inevitable end. On the floor of the bowling alley office in Riverdale lay the body of George Hamilton, 
his career as a mob leader cut short by the bullet fired by King Brown. A few miles away in the office of the FBI, agent in charge Collins was making his first move in his drive against the gang. Send for me, Mr. Collins? Yes, Terrell. I just spoke to that druggist in St. Louis, the one who received the threatening letter. Oh? As you know, he didn't want to cooperate with Police Chief Monroe. Yes. But after reflecting on the matter, he decided it was his duty to help the FBI. He's going to fly here this afternoon on business. He'll bring the letter with him. I see. I want you to arrange to meet him at the airport. Anybody heard the shot? That is, nobody but you, sweetheart. What happens now? I don't know yet. Are we just going to sit around here with that... that body? Maybe. King. <clears throat> yeah? You said something to George when you were having that argument with him. What? You said if you were going to take his gun away from him, you were going to take everything. Remember? Yeah, yeah. What did that mean? It didn't include you, sweetheart. I was just asking. Look, Ellen, the only reason you're not down there on the floor, too, is because I never killed a woman. It's bad luck. So what does happen to me? I don't know yet. I've got more important things to think about. Like what? Like getting rid of the stiff. What are you going to do with him? Well, I can't stuff him and hang him on the wall. Very funny. So I guess we wait around here until tonight, and then you and I will put him in a car and run it off the pier in the river. Mm Mm-hmm. Just like old times for you, I guess. Not exactly, no. Then I used cement. I met the druggist at the airport, all right, Mr. Collins. Here's the letter. Good. Hmm. It's signed by George Hamilton, all right. Yes, but the body of the letter's in a different handwriting, Terrell. Oh? Look at this sample of Hamilton's handwriting. Chief Monroe furnished us. Yeah. They're different, all right, aren't they? Now we'll compare the handwriting in the body of the letter with this other sample of handwriting I dug out of our files. Whose is it? A gentleman by the name of King Brown. King Brown? Mm Mm-hmm. Monroe said the new gang's operation followed the old King Brown pattern, remember? Yes. I found out a while ago that Brown was released from prison about a month ago. Uh Uh-oh. How would you say these two handwritings compare? It looks like King Brown has returned to Riverdale. Yes. Let's go. When did they move into the bowling alley, Chief? About a week ago, Mr. Collins. That must be the office there. Let's have a look. Right. Try the door. It's open. Probably a light switch just inside the I door. found it here. Well, I'd say we're a little late. Yeah, looks like they've cleaned out. Look at that open safe in those desk drawers. What do you make of this, Collins? Well, offhand, I'd Mr. Say... Collins, look. What? That's blood on the carpet over there. Well, Brown what? must have done a little liquidating. And whoever was here last hasn't been gone long either. What have you found, Terrell? Cigarette, still smoking in this ashtray. A woman's cigarette, lipstick on it. Hmm. That must have been Hamilton's girl. Yes. But who was liquidated? My guess is that it was Hamilton. And inasmuch as they've just cleaned out, Brown will have to get rid of the body before he does anything else. Then I've got a hunch where we can catch Brown if we hurry. Come on. King, where are you going to dump the body? Well, just for the sake of old times, I'd like to use a pier a little ways ahead. What about the car? George stays right in it. They both go in the river. Oh. King. Yeah? Have you made up your mind about me yet? Yeah. Well? Here's a pier. What's the story? The story is, baby, you know too much. What do you mean? You know I killed Hamilton, and you know who's the boss of the mob. Look, King, you don't think I'd ever double-cross you, do you? I'm going to guarantee that right now. King, what are you going to... King! So long, sweetheart. You're staying in there for the ride. No, no, 
Who are you? Special agent for the FBI. Okay, G-Man, but if you think you're going to take me... Now get up. The girl seems to have fainted, Mr. Collins. That's not what's wrong with Hamilton, though, on the floor of the car. How'd you know I'd be here? Chief Monroe remembered this pier. According to him, this is where you used to dump all your victims. Come on, Chief. We're going to get the rest of his boys. King Brown is now back in the state penitentiary serving a life sentence. And Riverdale has once more been freed from mob rule. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI was a demonstration of the kind of teamwork it's going to take to prevent the return of gangsterism to America. The teamwork of local and federal law enforcement officers plus the cooperation of you, the American citizen. Your local law enforcement officers are doing their part faithfully. And 24 hours around the clock, your FBI is doing its part. But are you doing yours? It is your fight, too. And the security of your home and your rights and privileges as an American depend on its outcome. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting story from the files of your FBI. And now again, let me remind you to check with your Equitable Society representative about the safest and wisest investment a parent can make for his children's future, an equitable educational fund. Without obligation, he will also show you the Equitable Society's memorandum on the costs of higher education and some of the opportunities it opens. You'll find your Equitable Society representative in the phone book under the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Murder on the Range. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Murder on the Range, on this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.